guys, welcome back to another really awesome week of zoo school. Today we are gonna go see some animals in our African savanna. So let's get to it. Hi, my name is Amy and I have the honor of being the main caretaker of the red pandas here at the Cape May County Zoo. As you can see right here, we have one of our two red pandas that we currently have. His name is Benjamin. Benjamin is about four and a half years old. He was born at the Philadelphia Zoo and he and his sister were named in a naming contest and they were named Benjamin and Betsy after Benjamin Franklin and Betsy Ross. Shortly thereafter, Benjamin moved out to Sacramento Zoo in California for breeding purposes. He had a couple of successful litters and then when he was retired from breeding, he got sent to us last fall. So he is here as a companion for our other panda, Luna. Benjamin is about 12 pounds in weight. Their weights fluctuate a little bit throughout the year. It's a little different than normal animals. A lot of animals tend to bulk up in the winter and slim down in the summer. With red pandas, it's actually the opposite. They kind of slim down in the winter or in the um, in the winter and bulk up a little bit in the summer. Benjamin is a pretty active little guy. Um, you'll see him out here running around a lot on the ground, and he'll spend a lot of time outside chewing on bamboo. Red pandas are arboreal, which means they spend a lot of time up in the tops of the trees. Um, you'll notice, maybe we'll get a shot of Luna, um, the bottoms of their feet don't have pads on their paws like dogs would have or your cat, but they're actually covered in fur. This serves as insulation to keep them warm since they live in cooler climate, and it also helps them to grip the branches when they walk on their branches. And they also have this really cool adaptation on their feet that's kind of like a thumb, but it's actually just an extension of their wrist bone, which helps them to grab the bamboo, which is a huge part of their diet. Red pandas are actually classified as carnivores, but they have adapted to eat mostly bamboo. Over three quarters of their diet in the wild is bamboo, but they are known to also eat eggs and birds and insects and flowers. They have to eat a lot of bamboo in order to maintain because they can't really, they're not built to digest it and they can't get all the nutrients out of it. So they just have to eat massive quantities of it. Uh, red pandas are not as closely related to giant pandas as people think. When people hear the word panda, they automatically think of the giant panda, which basically looks like a big black and white teddy bear. Red pandas were actually discovered and named panda 50 years before the um, giant panda. So red pandas are actually the original panda. Red pandas are endangered in the wild. Their wild population is estimated at below 10,000 mature individuals. This is due to habitat loss and fragmentation as well as poaching. And now we're inside the red panda den with our other red panda, Luna. Generally, life expectancy for a red panda in captivity is 12 to 14 years, the average being about eight to 10 years. Luna is 18 and a half. She, in June, she will be 19 years old and she is currently the oldest red panda in North America, which is pretty amazing. So you won't see her outside so much. She's kind of retired herself from being an exhibit animal. Sometimes in the morning, she'll go out for a little trot around the yard, get some fresh air. Then she just comes back in, chews on her bamboo and gets back to napping. Come on, Luna. If she comes down, we'll uh, give her some food and get a close up. Red pandas have a very low metabolism. They move pretty slowly. They don't move around a lot. Their meta metabolism is not that much more of than a, uh, a sloth, which are notorious for being slow moving and lazy. Come on, Luna. So red pandas are actually pretty intelligent and very trainable. These guys are both, Luna and Ben, are both trained to go on the scale, go in the crate, they're injection trained. They're trained to give their paw when asked, and they are trained to let people touch them, which comes in really handy when the vets need to do anything for them because we don't have to net them or grab them or knock them out or, sorry, sedate them. 
um, unnecessarily because they will tolerate the vets touching them. So a lot of our training is really important for that type of thing, especially with an older animal like Luna. You can see how she's putting her hand out. See if I can get her to use her wrist. Now if you'll watch, she'll use her pseudo thumb to grip the biscuit. And that's the same way that they'll eat their bamboo. They'll grab the bamboo branch, bring it to their mouth and pull on it and tear the leaf off. As one of the elderly animals here at the zoo, Luna gets extra special care and love, as all geriatric animals should. Luna's challenge to you is to show us how you are reaching out to your elderly friends and relatives in these crazy times.